So how does that shift start to happen if it does? Joining us now, Times columnist Matthew Paris and Douglas Murray, the author of The Strange Death of Europe. People get used to things the whole time, don't they, Matthew? The things that you think will never be acceptable. They get used to words after a while, and the words no deal have been repeated so often now that I think people are used to the words. And so the task of the anti-no deal people becomes more difficult. We have to persuade them what the words actually mean, because the words don't create the shock that they used to any longer or that the shock has now been built into the understanding. So when you talk about, you know, whatever it is, the unemployment rates or the fall of the pound, or when you, you know, press the nuclear button and talk about fresh food or fresh water supplies, people just, they let it wash over them now. I think it's because they don't believe it. They just don't believe anything they hear any longer. They have no idea what's going to happen and they've heard politicians talking and they tend just to discount it all. We hear, we talk sometimes, Douglas, about the Overton window, this sort of over-intellectualised mm. idea that something that you could never have imagined suddenly seems much more palatable, much more credible. Mm. Do you feel that's where we are now? I agree with Matthew that people are incredibly sceptical of every claim. I'm very sceptical of every claim that I hear about No Deal because we've had so many claims over the last three years and so many of them have turned out to be untrue. There's been so much claim about the sky falling down and yet there it remains. That's not, if I may say so, I mean, it, that, it's, it's, it's not that that's the problem. Uh, uh, underlying all of this is a very, very simple problem, which is that we were given a vote in this country three years ago and it turned out that... Of the two options we had, there was only one we were really meant to vote for, and that in the three years since, the entire political class has made a horlicks out of doing it and has said, we don't understand what you meant when you voted to leave. It's, it's impossible to understand what the general public meant when they ticked the leave box. And I just you think don't that, believe that so many of us just feel it wasn't that complex. We were given a question. The British public voted by a majority, not a large majority, but a majority to leave. But and Douglas, yet here we are. That ignores huge just, stretches, it, Douglas, because it ignores, for example, you know, Nigel Farage sort of saying after the 2017 election that Norway seemed like the most logical uh, conclusion uh, now that people talked uh, of, of, you know, the economic union remaining, course. the single market remaining. Yeah, every, there's Anyone all can sorts, say that course, they think they understood the mandate. All and, sorts of inconsistencies we can point to in every individual and every political party, and we can play that game endlessly. The point is that as a country we still haven't left it's three years on now it's very galling for a lot of people and if we as a country are to ever well if we're going to even have a country at the end of this process we have to just well I think people who basically well, lost the vote have to get through these stages of grief and if I, I can say so there's one reason why they haven't which is that all the time dangling over these last three years has been the possibility that we won't leave and every time that hope has been injected back into the system we get more of this endless endless uh, Douglas, bile. You're, you're just joining the the politicians whom you say no one believes any 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 longer you have a point, though, when you say that simply repeating the mantra, the people voted to leave, the people voted to leave, has had, I think, quite a lot of power, has had quite a lot of force. And what those of us who are not at all sure about the wisdom of this have to do is persuade people to move on from thinking the people voted this or the people voted that to thinking what is now going to happen. And that, I think, is where we're having trouble shifting people's imagination. But is the truth that the mandate doesn't exist anymore. We don't actually know what people voted for entirely. The we mandate <laughs> becomes whatever public opinion now accepts. I mean, for you, the mandate was people voted to leave, just you know, leave. everything. It's, it's just okay, to leave. But there isn't a just to leave because we don't know what well, just to leave and remain in the union it, with, it, it would you know, be, with it would Ireland, be, it, would, it would be with not Scotland. being in 2019, still having this discussion, but having left. That's what leaving would have been. But, but again, you still haven't explained it. You haven't explained whether that means that we leave the union because of the Northern Ireland border or we leave I'm, the union because Scotland hasn't agreed or whatever it is. You can't say just to leave because the mandate becomes whatever public opinion accepts now. Isn't I, that the I, truth? No, I think both sides actually rather let the public down in, in that we really didn't discuss leaving without a deal no. uh, during the referendum campaign. Uh, uh, Dominic, Dominic Raab was completely that we did. wrong about that this morning. I, I can't think there's a single viewer who, who remembers an in-depth discussion of leaving with no deal during the referendum campaign. The Remainers didn't talk about it. I don't think we thought about it. The Leavers didn't talk about it. They talked about getting the best deal in history. 
and, and so there is this huge thing that has emerged since the referendum that no one knows how to handle. I, I just don't agree. I think that the Brexit vote is one of two votes in the Western world in the last few years, which has just not been accepted by an elite. I don't say the elite, but an elite uh, in the media, uh, in politics, in our parliament, and much more. And this is just a profoundly dangerous moment for our democracy. It's a very well, dangerous we, period we because, agree on that. <laughs> because this is the first time, I think, since uh, we've had the vote in this country, that we have voted and the vote has been simply rejected, or at least not accepted. So the logical position for you now is no deal. You don't think it should be a bluff. You think it should be... If, if you I, believe that it is just to leave, that means just get out, no I, deal, I mean, go. I, I, I don't know whether it's a bluff on the part of the government or not. I think it's unwise not to have had it on the but, table. But purists but like you... I'm not a purist on this. I simply think that we should, by now, three years on, have had be, been in the situation of not still having this discussion but about what is it the public meant when they voted to leave. They've just voted to leave. It's a completely... It's complex, but not that complex. It, it's a completely phantom discussion. Uh, because we'll have to have a deal with the European Union. They're our largest trading partner. The only question is whether we have the deal now before we leave or whether we leave and then have the deal. And when, if we do leave without a deal and negotiations start for a deal, they will raise all the same problems that Theresa May encountered over the last I mean, three isn't, years. You know, the marriage analogy is always used, but if you walk out on a marriage, it doesn't mean that you're divorced. You still have to go back and work out the papers and the kids and the dogs and the record mm. and all the rest of it, right? You still have to do something. You still have to carry on communicating to sure. get there. Sure. So how... Do, where? Well, there's no such thing as no deal. Rory Stewart kept saying this, but he was a voice crying in the wilderness. We have to have a deal, Douglas. Um, we do it after, after sure. Brexit, I, fine, but we I, have to do it, I just, don't we? I just, I just would... Uh, I think that the obsession about no deal, the warning again and again about it is simply the latest and maybe not the last attempt by people who lost the vote in 2016 to say we found another way to show the public that they were wrong by another threat, another way to terrify people. And I simply think it is continuously pumping poison into the system. We have to find a way to leave. Okay. And for things like this no deal to be just... just Does it occur to you that we really believe that it is a bad idea? It does occur to me, but lots of things are a bad idea. All sorts of elections, Matthew, are, uh, have results that the public have, which we have to accept. We may think it's a bad idea. You and I might think it's a bad idea to okay. elect Jeremy Corbyn. We'd still have to accept it if the public voted for it. Um, We'd have to. We're going to end there, but thank you both very much indeed. <laughs> we're going to talk about something different tomorrow, but that's that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.